Hello, I am Get Good Fox, and today I'm going to be talking about what the best crops to plant for profit are in summer. And I'm going to give you recommendations regardless of what stage of the game you're in. Whether it's the first time you've played Stardew Valley, it's your first summer, it's your second summer, or beyond. Not all the crops are immediately available, so I will have recommendations for a variety of states of the game. Now, I'm going to be considering the crops best strictly in terms of their monetary value. And I bring this up because there are crops that are extremely useful and are valuable, but not necessarily for the money they make. For example, the hot pepper does not sell for a whole lot of money, but there are two characters who consider it their favorite gift. So it's actually very valuable, just not for money. At any rate, though, let's move on to the chart that I've prepared to make it easy to visualize and absorb the information that we're going to go over. If you're familiar with the game, the first thing you're going to notice is that the ancient fruit is not on the list. The ancient fruit is the best crop of every single season, but it is kind of a technicality, so I don't include it in a summer-themed guide. The next thing I want to talk about, though, is the numbers on the bars. How do I get them, or what do they represent? What they represent is if you took the crop and planted it in one tile and then it grew, you harvested it, replanted, harvested until you got as many harvests as possible within the season. You sell all the product, add up that number and subtract the seed buy in to plant them in the first place. That is how much money you will make or in the case of sunflower, how much money you're estimated to lose. At any rate, let's get started. Not every one of these crops is simply available from Pierre, so I will go through them and make notes of any special things that you're going to want to know, starting with the starfruit. Starfruit is what I would consider the most profitable crop in the summer, with few exceptions. One of them is the ancient fruit, the king of all crops, and then the other one is the coffee bean, which can technically exceed the starfruit if you are planting it in the spring because it grows both in the spring and the summer. However, the starfruit can exceed the coffee bean if you turn it either into jelly or wine, which doubles or triples its base value respectively. The thing about the starfruit is that you can only buy it from Sandy, who lives in the desert, and to get to the desert, you will need to complete the vault bundle. In addition to that, the seeds are really expensive. They cost 400 gold each, so if you don't have a whole lot of money to invest into starfruit in the first place, you're not going to be able to buy very many seeds. Anyways, let's talk about coffee beans next. There's a lot of technicalities to this crop. The first issue is that it's very powerful, it's very profitable, but there's only two ways to get it. The first way is to buy it from the wandering trader, but she's going to sell it for like 1500 gold, so you might not be able to afford it very easily in the very beginning of the game. The other way to get it is to hope you get lucky in killing dust sprites, which is an enemy in the ice section of the mines, and they have a low chance to drop a coffee bean, which would be a way to get it without paying. The thing about coffee beans, though, is that they spread virally because when you plant them and they mature, they give four coffee beans. So the product that you sell is also the product that you plant, unlike something like a star fruit where you cannot plant the star fruit in the ground. So one coffee bean will allow you to generate a very large quantity of them. You can also put the coffee beans in a keg and create coffee, which you can drink for a brief increase in movement speed, or you can sell them for a double profit. Now let's talk about the blueberry. The blueberry is what I consider to be the best general purpose crop. If you cannot set up a farm of star fruit, coffee beans, or ancient fruit, then just go with blueberry. As you can see, the value is still really high, and it's really easy to get blueberry. You just go to Pierre, buy blueberry seeds, you plant them, and you harvest them. To make matters better, it is a continuously growing crop, meaning when you harvest the blueberries, it will not destroy the plant in the process, so you don't even have to worry about reseeding. It's an excellent crop to plant. Now let's move on to the red cabbage, and there's two important things to know about it. One, Pierre does not sell red cabbage seeds until the second year of the game. It is possible to get a red cabbage earlier in your first year from the wandering trader, but otherwise you'll have to wait. 
The reason that's important is because this item, the red cabbage, is used to complete the dye bundle. So the only way to complete the dye bundle and therefore complete all of the community center in your first year is the hope that the wandering merchant sells one in your first year. Now let's talk about hops. The first thing I want you to know about hops is that they do grow on a rack, and this rack obstructs your character's movement, so avoid planting them in these really dense fields because they will block you from harvesting the hops that grow in the central areas. Other than that, the main things you want to know is that these actually produce once a day, once the plant matures, and their primary value is putting them in a keg and creating pale ale, which sells for a decent amount of money, and Pam will want one of them to complete a quest for her. Next up, though, is the melon, which is one of the crops that is capable of growing into a giant variation of itself. The giant variation can be left as a decoration or harvested for a bonus quantity of the crop, and the way you get them is by planting melons in a rectangular field that is at least 3x3 three three in area, but can be larger. Melons have a average value, and I would say the best use of them is to give them to Penny, as they are one of her favorite gifts. But the next crop is the hot pepper, and we do get a pretty sharp drop-off of profitability starting with the hot pepper, so I recommend not really planting these for making money. Instead, you should give them to Lewis and Shane because both of them value hot peppers as a favorite gift. The next one on the list is the tomato. This crop should not be planted for profit. Instead, it's used to complete the summer crops bundle, and it's actually a ingredient in six different cooking recipes. So its value is in cooking, not profit. After that is the radish, which is uh, really a crop you could just skip on. It's really not good for anything. I mean, there is a completionist value if you want to get polyculture or you want to cook one of every dish, but other than that, sorry, radish fans. Following the radish, we have another sharp drop-off in gold value, starting with the poppy, but poppy quickly makes up for it by enhancing the value of honey from beehives from the base value of 100 gold per honey to 300 and. 80, which is outstanding. In addition to that, after picking the poppy flowers, you can give them to Penny because they are one of her favorite gifts. Next up is the Summer Spangle, another summertime flower which will enhance the base value of honey from 100 gold to 280 gold, which is 100 gold less than what poppy does, so don't plant Summer Spangle for enhancing honey. Instead, plant it to give to Carolyn because it's one of her favorite gifts. Next up is wheat. Wheat sells for dirt, so do not sell wheat directly. Instead, either put it into a keg, which produces beer, and beer sells for 200 gold, pretty valuable, or put it in a mill, which is a structure that you have to build, and that'll create wheat flour, which you can then use to cook without having to buy the flour from Pierre, which saves you a little bit of money. Next up we have corn, and corn also sells for dirt, so don't plant corn except to complete bundles, to create tortillas for cooking, or to put into an oil maker to make oil. And finally, the weird sunflower crop, which actually loses you money, but has the potential to grow an army of sunflowers, because whenever you harvest a sunflower, you will get between zero and three seeds from it. So if you're lucky, you could plant an army of sunflowers from the few that you create. I wouldn't bother with the money-making aspects of it. Here's what you can do with the sunflower. The first thing is you can complete the dye bundle. You can put it in an oil maker to make oil, though you would certainly prefer to use corn. But you can give it to Haley. Haley is usually rather particular about the gifts she likes, and this is one of the more accessible ones. The last thing that's kind of odd about the sunflower is that it does not enhance the value of honey despite being a flower. And those are the crops of summer. To recap, the king of all fruits, the ancient fruit, is of course the best, but if you don't have it, you can go for the star fruit, which brings in killer money if you can turn it into jelly or wine. Just keep in mind that the seeds are very expensive and you will need to get to the desert to buy them in the first place. 
Barring that, you can also do coffee beans, which are a bit of a pain to set up, which is why, for the general player, I would go with blueberries. Do not ignore some of those other plants I mentioned, like the hot peppers, for their gift-giving potential. And don't forget to enhance the honey of your beehives with poppy to get that 380 gold for honey bonus. But that is that. Like this video if it helped you, if it gave you some new ideas or clarified anything. Subscribe for future Stardew Valley content. And of course, remember that you don't have to be good to get good.